last remaining place in the Premiership. Life can be ruthless, football is ruthless, but it's just how this has turned out. Both teams know what's at stake, home and away, and it's winner take off. And so it comes down to this, 180 minutes of nerve-shredding drama for a place in the top flight of Scottish football. It's first blood for the wheel! They have another one! Quite astonishing at Ibrox! It's a lifeline! They'll be hurting after that tonight and they'll come to third part with the mindset of the, they've got to go for gold. We're still in there and we're still in there fighting. Ties not over, we know that. Good evening. After Motherwell's victory over Rangers at Ibrox on Thursday night, could the Steel Men finish the job? Or would Rangers stage a remarkable comeback and claim a place in the Premiership next season? A day of real drama coming up with us in the studio this evening. The former Motherwell player, Pat Nevin, and the journalist, Richard Wilson, who's covered the Rangers story through the divisions every step of the way. We'll also look back at a hugely memorable Scottish Cup final a little later. But today was all about a different kind of footballing excitement. Hope, fear and angst all rolled into one final game, a place in the top flight of Scottish football at stake. Commentary comes from Craig Patterson and Liam McLeod. It's in the hands of the steel men. Motherwell are in charge and safety is theirs for the taking. But given the season they've had, nobody around here is taking anything for granted. Given the season Rangers have had, not too many outside Ibrox are predicting a turnaround today. It'll come as no surprise that Ian Barraclough names the team that won on Thursday. Goal scorers Erwin and Ainsworth will look to profit again on the counter. Stephen Pearson is fit and starts. Stuart McCall has resisted the temptation to begin with Tom Walsh after an impressive cameo the other night. He does, however, hand a first start to Shane Ferguson. He starts Boyd and brings McCulloch in for the suspended McGregor. Kenny Black and Stuart McCall know this place like the back of their hand, but they will still try and relegate their old team. The referee is the experienced figure of Craig Thompson. Four times Motherwell have lost by two goals or more at home this season, but it hasn't happened since Aberdeen won here at the start of January. Never mind that, Motherwell haven't lost here since mid-February. Craig Patterson has played for both these clubs, and what an afternoon it is. A high pressure, Liam, for both sides. They know they've got to get through this time. They've got to stay in the Premiership, Motherwell. Rangers looking for promotion yet again. So much at stake. Motherwell halfway there with a 2-0 lead, but still a job of work to do. Rangers have an early opportunity here. Boyd, Law and Vucic all over it. It's going to be a battering effort from Boyd, which is blocked. I'll never understand why they take the touch. It allows Keith Lasley to get out the wall and he's only two yards or a yard away. And Chris Boyd eventually takes it. Boyd gives it straight to Lasley. Josh Law is it pinched off him. This is Shane Ferguson. Leaves it for Vucic. Murdoch, barely mentioned so far. Spread out to Foster. Boyd attacks it. Not quite. That's great defending from Louis Lang again. Got his body in a really good position. This is a terrific ball in. Nightmare for defenders, but he keeps his body ahead of Chris Boyd, makes sure he can't get a touch. That's exactly what Chris Boyd was looking for. Good defending. Erwin. Second half of the season, Lee Irwin. He's got a corner for his team too. Yeah, it's good play by Lee Irwin. The ball was just getting knocked back to front by both teams all of a sudden. One of the younger lads has the composure to take a touch, go at his opposite number, and he eventually earns himself against his team a corner. Oh, it goes by Zalukas. Johnson. Oh, that's dreadful. This could be a problem for Rangers here. There's a card coming out. It is yellow only. Yeah, the young lads actually dived into the challenge. Stevie Hamill, I think, gets there first, knocks the ball away, and then the referee has to decide what colour is the card, and uh, he's going to give him the benefit of the doubt. It's only going to be a booking. Oh, 
certainly forceful. At pace, that did not look good. No, and it's, to be fair, at least he, it's not jumping in with two feet and straight leg. He's, he's gone in side foot, and he's, he's caught Stevie Hamill, but as I say, no worse than the Stephen Pearson one earlier. Goes long again. It was missed by Zalukas. It's alive here for Rangers. It's Vucic on the turn. McCulloch goes after it and concedes the free kick. I think the referee gets it right, but the minute that ball bounces in the box, it is an absolute nightmare for defenders. You've got to meet that at the highest point. Once it's in there, it can end up absolutely anywhere. Eventually, McManus goes to ground and gets the free kick. And a flailing elbow from the Lithuanian there. He might be quite lucky that Craig Thompson, he might well have taken some action against Zalukas. Here come Motherwell again, growing in confidence, as you would imagine. As the game goes on without Rangers scoring. They know they can put this to bed if they can score themselves, you would think. Johnson. Oh, it stayed up. He's found Erwin. Lee Erwin! He's such a good player in the box, back to goal, doesn't matter to him. If you get the ball to his feet, he will produce a bit of space and he'll get his shot off. And it's not far beyond that back post. Really good strike across Cammy Bell. Goalkeeper's beaten just wide of the post. Yeah, Craig Thompson wasn't happy with the challenge on Laslett. Free kick in an area where I'm not sure if Motherwell have anybody who can worry the goalkeeper from this kind of distance. Initially, McCulloch wins the header well enough. Keith Lasley goes in for the challenge, and yep, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a trip. Motherwell beginning to look like the home team. First ten minutes or so, Rangers had a go at them. Didn't really lay a glove. Now Motherwell have another opportunity here. And he was almost on the score sheet again, Stephen McManus. Yeah, he doesn't get enough for it. He gets lights maybe slightly too much on this, but that's a free header in the middle of the box. Poor marking by the Rangers' defence. Here's Miller, Vucic. Oh, that's a free kick, and that is in a very good area. Oh no, he's not giving the free kick for Rangers. It's a yellow card for diving by Harris Vucic. Yeah, that's a big decision by the referee. Vucic, you know, he certainly goes by Steve McManus. Is there any contact? His first touch is good. Now he just nicks it past the Mullable defender. Steve McManus picks up, and you know, does that trailing leg catch him? Hard to tell. And even if the referee doesn't see this as a free kick, I'm not 100% sure he can claim that as definitely a dive. Certainly not a diving motion, if you like. But the decision has been made. Which kitch booked. Manus hey, hey, hey. goes long, so Yukas heads away. And momentarily, though, Johnson did well. This is McDonald. And Johnson! It's a brilliant effort from Marvin Johnson. Goes for the far corner, doesn't miss by much, but once again, everything good down there. Scott McDonald's involved, takes the ball in, cuts back, leaves it to his teammate, and he's only missed by inches. Good play, McDonald. You know, these people don't dive in because they know he's got skill, and that is so close. Yet to score for Motherwell, Marvin Johnson, but that was a fabulous effort. They've gone close twice now. Here comes Vucic. Murdoch, that's Boyd. Holding it up, he's got Kenny Miller out to the right. It's a corner. It's the first time we've seen Rangers as an attacking force for quite some while, and this has been their best outlet. Balls into the box, you know, looking for headers on this occasion. Kenny Miller shot deflected, but a corner to come. Ferguson's corner. Lastly, so you cast! Oh dear. That has got to go down as a really good chance. A good ball into the front post. Yet again, Motherwell don't deal with it. And Mario Salukas, he's got to hit the target from there. It comes at him quick off Keith Lasley, but if he hits target, he scores. Well, he knows it, doesn't he? Balls. Another head up here. Well, skips away from Ainsworth. Ferguson. Oh, did that go out of play? No. Wallace in for Miller. Miller gets himself away from Lang. Oh, down he goes! Craig Thompson not interested. He had a brilliant view to the referee. 
Yeah, well, Scott McDonald, you know, when you get any kind of challenge here, you've got to be very careful. It doesn't look like a penalty, you know, but as soon as a player goes down, he's asking the question. Here come Rangers, almost into Vujkic, away by Hamill. McDonald, it's a lovely touch by Johnson. He's dragged Foster right out of position. Johnson, great footwork, good skill. Bell watches it, misses it! The priceless goal of the tie! And the one that surely saves Motherwell's skin and condemns Rangers! That's a perfect start to the second half for Motherwell, and it's, I'm afraid it's an absolute nightmare for Cammy Bell. Good play for Marvin Johnson, but when the shot, eventually, when he makes a bit of room here and he pulls the trigger, it's blocked by a Rangers defender, spins up in the air towards the goal. Goalkeeper looks like he's got it covered, and he completely misses his punch. Terrific for Marvin Johnson, but unfortunately, it's going to go down as a real howler from Cammy Bell. The kind of goal that sums up the way Rangers are these days. Marvin Johnson doesn't care how that came about. He has the goal, and surely Motherwell are safe. Rangers need three to just force extra time. Well, they're trying to climb a mountain early on, it's just turned into Everest. You know, three goals in a short spell of time when you've really struggled to put the Motherwell defence under pressure, and you expect Motherwell to grow in confidence on the back of that goal. There was a flare thrown on from the main stand by a Motherwell supporter. And Stuart McCall and Kenny Black, if they had a plan A, they've had to rip that right up now. Well, Fir Park has just erupted in the wake of that Johnson goal. It's not your day, it's not your day. And it isn't for Lee McCullough and his teammates right now. Chris Boyd is coming off. He will not be the hero. He single-handedly kept Kilmarnock up last season. He has not had the same impact at Rangers second time around. Here's Tom Walsh, first real touch of the ball since coming on to the other sub Clark. Similarly. The Rangers have a corner. And they the quality will... is going to have to be better. No Chris Boyd in there. You know, the two centre backs will go forward, but uh, you know, that's about it in terms of six foot plus targets. Right in front of their own fans. It's not a bad effort, is it? Would have been an absolute wonder goal if Lee McCullough could get that on target. He's actually hit it really well, it's behind him. He's gone for the overhead kick, struck it well, but just couldn't keep it down. Here's Clark. Hamill all over him. Vucic. He's going to have a go here. the right idea but just never got enough on it moves on to strong left foot but doesn't catch it over towards Nicky Clark Lasley is a heavy touch from him this is Murdoch Vujkic but he's going to bring it back he's taking it quickly Richard Foster Clark, stout defending again from Motherwell, they had plenty back, but they've got plenty streaming forward in support of this counter, this is Johnson, Ainsworth, there it is, if there was any doubt before, none of that remains, Rangers are staying down, Motherwell are staying up, it's 5-1 in aggregate, and no surprise yet again, it's the breakaway from Motherwell, a tactic that has worked an 
absolute treat for the Steel Men. Break things up, spring forward and finish. And at half it started, Rangers had a free kick, took it short, should have had a shot at goal. At the other end, Muller will move Sharpish forward. When it comes to Lionel Ainsworth, he's always going to take it on. Deflection beats the goalkeeper, but Motherwell now comfortable. Great break, and another quality finish from Ainsworth. Two goals in the two matches for Lionel Ainsworth. It's good night Vienna for Rangers. It is happy days for the Steelmen. A glorious moment for Ainsworth. And for those in Claret and Amber. Here's Lee Irwin. As Colm McDonald wanted it, he was screaming for the balls, he peeled over to the right. Here's Johnson, Mother will fancy more. They fancy making this even worse for Rangers. It's Irwin on the turn. Bell eventually holds on to the Sutton effort. Motherwell are so unlucky not to have added another there. It's a couple of decent stops, but uh, good play by Marvin Johnson again. Lee Irwin, first one's blocked, thought this one's a certainty. Good save by the goalkeeper. Walsh will eventually take this corner kick. Rangers last of the game, you feel. In it comes, it's on top of the keeper. Will Mosley eventually untangling himself. Motherwell looking for the cherry on the cake here. Here's Erwin. Can they go out in a blaze of glory? Lovely play by Erwin. Oh, it's a penalty. Without doubt, broad smile on the face of Ian Baraklov. And what a way to end the season. He scored 12 goals this season. John Sutton. He has a chance to score Motherwell's last goal of the season. It's glory, glory, Motherwell! They have pulverised Rangers Football Club over two legs. It is 6-1 on aggregate. That's a perfect penalty kick from John Sutton. Just very calmly strolls up, waits to see where the goalie's going. Goalie goes right, ball goes to his left. It's in the back of the net and a perfect finish for Motherwell. It is a roasting that they have given Rangers. Although we knew a long time ago the Ibrox club would be remaining just where they are. In the lower leagues. Safety, signed, sealed and delivered with plenty to spare. Motherwell have shown a steal that this part of the world is renowned for. They've shown a grit and determination that it has been lacking for a lot of this season. Now something has broken out on the park and it has involved Bilal Mosny, who's a firecracker character. He has got hopelessly involved in this. Shameful from the Rangers defender. Absolutely shameful at the end. It is Motherwell's day though. The truth is, none of the rest of this season matters to them anymore. It is all about the future. They can write this off now. Rangers simply can't write this off now. They dubbed it the three-year adventure. That will now be, at the least, a four-year adventure. They have blown their big chance of the top flight and face another season in the championship. Well, this is what happened right at the end. Bilal Mosny, that is disgraceful. He is kicked out. Utterly shameful. There are multiple fans who were told to stay in the stand celebrating now. Well, it's not what we wanted to see at the end of this one. A summer of turmoil will now begin for Rangers that continues to find new ways to disbelieve its support. But this is Motherwell's day. They are staying up. It finished Motherwell 3, Rangers 0, 6-1. Convincing on aggregate. So, drama right to the end. As for the result, no doubt about the side that deserved to win 6-1 to Motherwell on aggregate. Let's hear from a very relieved Motherwell manager, Ian Barraclough. He spoke to Chris McLaughlin. I think over the course of the two, two legs, we've, we've, we've proven that the, uh, you know, I think we were the stronger team in, in the end. You know, I think it, 
some fantastic football play by both sides and um, some great goals. But uh, you know, we we managed to take our chances at the right time and um, and and dealt with the situation. And I thought that, that you know that the lads just take all the credit for for that. Absolutely, it's all about the first goal. Pure and simple. Um, we had a couple of opportunities first half. I thought they were nervous. I thought we were tense. Obviously, we knew if they get the first goal, it's it's almost tie over. I think they knew. I think they dropped really deep first half, and I thought it gave us a lot of the ball. We didn't create great chances, but um, it's it was all today about the first goal. And you know, I don't want to make excuses, but you know, they've scored three deflected goals against us. Over the piece, have been the better side. People remember the last 30 minutes today in the scoreline. If we'd have got the first goal, it would have been a complete different game. Relief, I think, is probably the first emotion. Uh, it wasn't an entirely enjoyable experience today, to be honest. Um, you know, loved Thursday's game, but I think we knew on Thursday you always had another game to go, if you like, and I think we knew today it was this, this was it. This was a, even although we obviously had a, a good lead to protect, but you know we got the job done. I don't think we were at our best at all, to be honest today, but we, we found a way to do the job, and, and that's you know that's what matters at the end of the day. We witnessed some fairly disgraceful scenes at the end. Did you catch any of that? Do you understand what happened? And on my heart, I didn't catch any of it, and that's gospel truth. I, I was shaking hands with the opposition um, and all of a sudden people started rushing over so I didn't I didn't see it and, and uh, football doesn't need that Scottish football doesn't need that sort of uh, headline it should have been all about the how well Motherwell Football Club played today uh, against tough opposition uh, and over the two legs it was a great great spectacle for, for Scottish football and it should be remembered for that and not for any uh, any scenes that, that has got no place in the, in, uh, in football whatsoever Huge congratulations to Motherwell. Commiserations to Rangers. We'll discuss the ugly scenes at the end of that match shortly. Pat Nevin and Richard Wilson with me in the studio this evening. Richard, so much talk about the importance of getting the first goal this afternoon. Rangers went for it. Ultimately, though, it seems they lacked the creativity to actually break down Motherwell. Yeah, I mean, there was, a, there was quality missing throughout the game from both sides. Let's be honest, it, it was a, an intriguing game of football. There was lots of drama, but there wasn't a lot of composure on show. The Rangers had to go for it. It was 90 minutes, the last 90 minutes of the season, the last chance to go up. Uh, they tried to be on the front foot. They tried to be proactive. They played two up front, and they had untidy half chances in and around the, the penalty area. Um, they, they tried to get the ball into to, to wide areas and deliver it into the box for Chris Boyd, but too often they ended up going long um, and they just didn't build enough passages of play to, to get any control of the game and their one kind of clear chance fell to Zaliukas and he lacked the composure to, to, to get the shot on target at the end of the first half. They did what they could but this was a Rangers team that I think just ran up eventually to the fact that they weren't good enough to go up. And just like Thursday night, Pat, started a bit slow for Motherwell, you'd have to say, but eventually they started to create chances. We saw the nerves without a doubt. I think they were just lumping the ball the way they were facing. I mean, Rangers, for me, they reverted to tight. Uh, the way they've done this season, just as you say, the long balls and crosses and not a lot of creativity. But Motherwell aren't really like that. At the start of the game, they were just lumping it. But when they got the few chances, first one there, Irwin, and you saw they really grown a lot about that chance from McManus there, not unlike the goal they scored the other night. And then Johnson, at this point in time, you're thinking it looks as if it's going to come at some point. They were growing in confidence, and the longer the game went, the more nervy. I thought Rangers got at that point in time, and the more comfortable Motherwell got, because every minute goes, and every minute they get clear, nearer to staying in the Premier League. Once Motherwell started asking questions of the Rangers' defence, that's when oh, the Rangers' defence started to crumble, and that's when the game started to go Motherwell's way. That's what we saw in the second half. One or two big moments in this match, you could say. Um, and one of them came in the first half, but should Rangers have had a penalty? Well, notice that Stuart McCall didn't make an excuse about this because this is, you know, the first goal is important. Now, Kenny Mill, referee's good position, he handballs it here, the Miller fans all shouting for it. But was this a penalty? He comes in at the back here to tackle, comes through the back. I think you can see he doesn't get the ball and he gets it back of Kenny Miller's leg there. So I think that's a penalty kick. And I think Rangers are unlucky in that situation. Now, it's a big jump to say a team that lost 6-1 over two legs sure. could have made a big difference, but that takes it to 3-2 and the yeah. momentum's on Rangers' side and it would have made it a, a much more interesting one, but sometimes you get these calls, sometimes you don't. For whom the bell tolls, Richard, a moment that Cammy Bell will relive, you'd imagine, in his nightmares. Yeah, I mean, it should be said that even just in the build-up, the last sort of five, ten minutes before this, Rangers have been put under pressure, Foster have made a number of errors, so Motherwell built up to this. Um, but Cammy Bell here, he's, he's back on his line, he goes with one hand, he then switches to the other. I don't know if he's worried about hitting the post or falling into the net, whatever it is, but he makes a wrong decision here because he reaches the ball, so he should be able to deflect that away. 
I think we see at the end there, he's actually, when he falls down, I think he punches it because he thinks he's going to fall into the net, but both his hands there are actually on the pitch there. So if he would have made the decision to catch it, he certainly would have kept it out. He just if, made if a bad decision. If he's making contact with the ball, you're expecting him to keep it out one way or another. I don't think anyone's arguing the fact that it was a mistake. <laughs> it was a biggie. I think there's certainly more effective punches this afternoon. Now, we'll get to that shortly. Um, after that goal went in, Pat, a sense that the Rangers players perhaps thought that the game was up. Yeah, and they're defending just got worse. Well, so Rich and I were just talking before about the fact that you, you have to engage players when they run towards you. And the Rangers defenders, at this point in time, were just backing off and backing off time again. And you can't do that against the pace. With Motherwell broke well, but look at this, no one engaged him. And he'd, he'd, he'd carried that from the edge of his own yeah. box all the way up the pitch, and nobody engaged until inside their own half. So even if it does take a deflection, the Rangers defenders have brought that pressure on themselves. They're fearful because they lack pace and they've, they've not been great defensively in the last parts of this season, but and Motherwell and under Ian Barker, they have they've done really well. They've got the tactics spot on, played the right players, the right system, and they've just found the Rangers' weaknesses and they've delivered when they need And before we get to the ugly scenes, it was a great day for Motherwell. Two great days for Motherwell, utterly deserved winners, and, and there can be no doubt about that at all, can there? I don't take nothing away from it at all. I mean, delighted for them. It means so much to Motherwell for the club. I mean, obviously, the ramifications would have been huge had they gone down for the finances, etc. But they fought well, and I think they've had a very unlucky season. I think they had a poor start. I think they've been peers in the second half of the season. They've been really good. And from Rangers' point of view, they just ran into the wrong team. I think there's other teams from the top flight. Had they gone into that position, Rangers could have overcome but Motherwell are an improving team with nothing to worry about for next season. We'll talk about the implications for Rangers in a minute, but we've got to talk about the mad scenes yeah. at the end. They were unbelievable. What exactly happened, right. Pat? Well, quite simply, Erwin comes up towards Moshney and he simply wants to shake his hand. Have a look closely here. He wants to shake his hand and he shouts him. And he's a bit annoyed. So you move it on here. That's Mo uh, Moshney and that's Erwin. So as you move it on, he's shouting to him to shake his hand. And he gets a wee bit miffed, so he pushes him because of that. But you don't react like that. And the, le the, the left hook was incredible. Then everyone gets involved. You see everyone in the background going, I can't believe that. I've given him a wee shove, which is not the right thing to do. But you don't turn around and assault somebody for that. Now, I know he's frustrated. We know he's got a bit of history of that sort of personality. But who does that in that situation? No, he, he has he's, he's issues with his temper. I mean, yes, he's provoked. It's a push. But really, uh, you, know, you turn you around, back. you say something, you push back. You don't <clears> react that way. Um, and really, he's been a liability for a long time for Rangers. Rangers have never been able to rely on his behaviour on the pitch, and that, that's another example of that today. And Stuart McCall was very clear afterwards, he was a player who didn't have a future at the club anyway, and he almost, he absolutely certainly It sparked ugly there. scenes towards the end as well, Richard, with Motherwell fans as well, well on the pitch. Yeah, I think Motherwell fans were coming on anyway. I think there will be an issue for the club, there'll be questions for them to address. A flare went on the pitch, Motherwell fans came on. Fine, fans come on at the end of the season, it happens. But they ran straight towards the Rangers fans. They were goading them. They were gathering there. The police had to intervene. Eventually, there was police horses on the pitch. Um, you know, it's difficult for clubs, I get that, but you have to ask questions about the level of stewarding to allow that to happen. This will be the picture of the day tomorrow in the newspapers. Uh, one lucky snapper's hit the jackpot, that's for sure. Um, what are the repercussions going to be from this, Richard? Well, there was three players sent off after the game. Mojni, Erwin and uh, Kerr of Motherwell. Um, so clearly the football authorities will be issuing bans for that behaviour there today. Um, I dare say that the police have said that they will look and see if that's something they're going to investigate. They tend to be reluctant and the game tends to be reluctant to want them to intervene because where do you stop? Well, the game, the game is very reluctant to do that. I mean, look back all the way to Duncan's Ferguson and sure, things yeah. like that as well. There could be legal ramifications. I, I personally hope not. The game has to be able to police itself to some degree but that's quite as close to assault as you can possibly get. You touched on it earlier, Pat. This was such a massive result for Motherwell. In a weird way, I suppose they don't know whether to celebrate tonight or... Well, they are celebrating, oh, got, even though it's, it's, it's maybe not the kind of, uh, of result or no, situation they wanted to be in, obviously. You've got to celebrate. and sort of, It's relief as much as anything else. And Dancing from Ian Barraclough? <laughs> not, not the best, but you can, you can <laughs> let people away with that. anything. It means a huge amount to the club. And they, they've had a tough time this season. It looked absolutely awful for long periods of the season. It did. But, but in actual fact, 
there's a good team in there. There's so much pressure, I think, building up to that game. And beforehand, we were at the game for radio and we're watching the, the build-up to the game. And Alan Burrows, who's the, the general manager at Motherwell, was pacing around the pitch, up and down the track side, up and down the pitch, all you know, for two or three hours before the game. And I know he gets nervous before the games, <laughs> but it was an indication of what was at stake for Motherwell because you've got people's livelihoods, you've got budgets, what do you do with your players, all the decisions that come with going down. So that's why um, there's an element of celebration at the end of that. It's not finishing sure. second bottom, it's safety. There, there, there's always, always tension when you get to the, the playoffs. And quite a lot of the time, the tension... In the end, they, they lose and said they get out of the way, but the Rangers fans were kept in there and the tension just spilled over slightly too much. Let's talk about Rangers very briefly, Richard. Of that squad, who stays now and who goes? Well, there's 12 out of contract. I think they will all go, although Stuart McCall did hint afterwards that he might want to keep some if he's still there. He will meet the boards in the next couple of days to have a discussion about his future. The head coach's position will be discussed first, then it will be the squad, but there will be changes at Rangers. A great day for Motherwell. Let's leave the Premiership playoff final for the moment and take a moment to look back on what was a hugely memorable day at Hampden Park yesterday afternoon. The 130th edition of the Scottish Cup final, Inverness Caledonian Thistle versus Falkirk. Commentary comes from Michael Stewart and Liam McLeod. David Raven is the big headline when it comes to the team news for Inverness today for a side that was already missing the suspended Gary Warren from its defence. He picked up an injury in the build-up to this. Graham Shinney, who's off to Aberdeen this summer, moves to the right with Carl Tremarco coming in for a start at left-back. Aaron Doran is preferred to Danny Williams. <laughs> It's an unsurprising look really to the Falkirk team, but Rory Loy plays for the first time since the quarter-final win over Queen of the South almost three months ago. He's off to Dundee in the summertime. He's our top scorer as well. How big a gamble will it be for him to start this afternoon? Goalkeeper Jamie McDonald has won one and lost one of these. Peter Grant's dad, Peter Senior, won it twice with Celtic. It's going to be a very, very interesting battle, just the... the Four sitting midfielders playing today. Inverness of Draper and Tanzine, Volks and Taiwo in the opposite side. As it comes through to Watkins, oh, that's the first big chance of the game. It fell to Marley Watkins. You see Shinny on his left foot. Might be a, a factor today, getting those balls whipped in, cutting back on his left foot. Free kick taken quickly. It's Volks! Oh, what an effort that was! It's in up the other end. What a hit again by Volks. He's got that ability. And unfortunately for the Falkirk fans up the other end, they were celebrating, but it's the, it's the wrong side of the net. There's no flag here against Watkins. And such an important intervention there by Peter Grant. Wonderful. It was, it was a great ball. And watch again Watkins' movement, really good movement. It's not a bad first touch, but it's the second one that just knocks it away from him. But Grant recovers really well. Here's Doran. He's got it through to Watkins, who's right McDonald! It's 1-0! composure from Watkins. He's caused Falkirk problems. He's caused them problems already today with his, his movement, stretching them in behind. There's Dorans. Dorans picking the ball up a great little area. Nice ball in behind him. He takes it round McDonald. Can Tanzi make of this? It would be interesting to know where that was going before it was blocked. Oh dear. Oh dear. Carl Tremarco. Willie Collum goes to his pocket and he's off. It's red for Tremarco. What a disaster here, you know, no pressure. A poor touch, gets it caught under his feet and then it's panic stations and terrible, terrible moment. Alston reacts quickly though and putting him under real pressure and, and now Inverness down to 10 men not playing particularly well in this half gives Falkirk a real lift Player Alston is over this free kick for the Bairns everyone bar Tom Taiwo and their goalkeeper in or around the box 
right on top of the keeper, and into the net it goes! It's Peter Grant, it's 1-1! A beautiful moment for the Bairns! Great quality delivery, and Peter Grant showing real determination to get his head on the end of it, and get his side level. Taiwo, Duffy, they're hunting down a winner. Our Falkirk, away by Draper. Now Watkins gets a little break of the ball, and now Watkins is away. He's on his own right now, though. A huge moment, potentially, in this final. It's Watkins' effort, spilled by McDonald, and James Vincent might have won the cup for Cali Vissel. Sensational! Watkins showing his power and pace and dragging the team on the park. I thought he'd lifted his head and seen Vincent, he was going to slip him in. Good support from Vincent to get up. And there you go, with four minutes to go, he could be making all the difference for his club. Graham Shinney will lift the William Hill Scottish Cup for 2014-15, which has been won by Inverness Cali Thistle. This is what it's all about. Best league finish, European football and silverware. Does it get much better than this? Inverness Cali Thistle, the 25th different side to lift the Scottish Cup. Their first major piece of silverware coming in their 21st year of existence. Jim Spence has spent the last couple of days in the Highland capital, immersing himself in this historic occasion. It was a terrific day at Hamden yesterday when Inverness Galley Thistle lifted the Scottish Cup for the first time in their short history. Now today it's all aboard the Inverness Galley Thistle Scottish Cup Express for the Open Top Tour of the city. Hooray! There's not many people stick, uh, you know, a winning goal in the net at Hamden part of the Scottish Cup final. What, what, it gives a feeling of what it was like. The best feeling ever in my football career. It's the best game I've ever played in in my life. <laughs> Potentially could be the biggest game I ever play in, so uh, to get a goal it is literally, it's a cliche, but it's what dreams are made of. It's been a great occasion, the boys have been great, they deserve it, and this is, this is what it's about. Yeah. It was great crack here on the bus, it was great crack to say last night as well, you <laughs> the bus. I think Danny two. Williams <laughs> next to me, <laughs> feeling it. <laughs> Come on, Dan. I'm tender to this. <laughs> the amount of fans that turned up yesterday, the amount of fans it's turned up today, the, you can hear the horns and that going. It's been unbelievable. We, we, we can't ask any more of the fans, you know. Oh, it's just buzzing. Everybody's here to see us, and um, it's the first time we've experienced this, so it's massive for the city, and it's good to see so many people. It's been a remarkable season, and to top it off, we're winning the Scottish Cup. Uh, absolutely outstanding. And you see what it means to the people in the city, and what it'll do for the city, uh, and also. I see so many young kids win for their trips here. And if that inspires them to want to play football, and hopefully eventually for Inverness, then we're certainly playing our part. we are going to be waiting for Tommy next season, but do you think this team can kick on? Of course they can, they've done it in the last few years and, and they keep achieving big things, so if they keep working hard, they'll achieve big things next season. I know what it means to everyone and you know the, the whole city, not just the club, the, the whole city. Uh, I think it's brought everyone together, but even before the game, the, the way the fans were together to support us was, was brilliant. Oh, Carl, that was someday for you yesterday. Yeah, there's, 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 there's a low point in life, I'm not going to lie. Um, like I said yesterday, uh, I just can't thank the boys enough for, for, for pulling us through. This winner's medal did buy the place in the living room. As a player, you always want to win trophies, you want to achieve things. And, you know, this season we've certainly done that and, you know, long may continue. There's been much talk in the past after the merger about this being a city divided. But after winning the Scottish Cup, bringing it home to this ranch of reception here in the Highland capital, it looks to me as though this is a city united. Glad to say uh, Jim Spence and John Hughes uh, survived their open top bus adventure. Who knew trees could be so dangerous, Pat? Um, Great day yesterday, great spirit shown by both sides. In the end, were Cali Thistle deserved winners? Yeah, I would say over the competition, they had a harder run to the final. And I think they've had, a, well, we said they're an amazing season. And I think we all thought beforehand, the accepted wisdom was if they scored first, then they would run out easy winners. And yeah. they did score first. And, you know, at that point in time, I just couldn't, they were the better team by a, a huge distance in that first half. 
The question whether it was offside or not, it wasn't offside. There was a player just there, maybe his arm was off in an offside position, but that means you're not offside. Great ball through by Aaron Dorn, but this was a big moment. And it's a mistake here by Tremarco, but we freeze it here to show you that he's only got 17 yards to get to that position there. Devine, he's got 27 yards. He's 10 yards behind, he's not going, getting there. So just the as well we had that camera stationed in <laughs> space. <laughs> and the only question left there, was it a foul? Uh, yes. I don't think there's any question back about that. <laughs> so well it? done the officials, they've got it absolutely spot on. But at that point in time you think, well it's changed now, Falkirk are going to win this one. Yeah, but I mean that's, I think Falkirk played their way back into the game before yeah. that anyway. They'd come out in the second half, they'd attacked, they'd gone two up front. Uh, Peter Grant scoring with a good header there. I thought he and Will Volks were Falkirk's two best players yeah, on the day. You, you want Vincent there? He started there in his own half. I know. In his own box there. And that is one hell of a run. But he I, has come on as sub, I will say I think, that. I think, yeah, but I think the point about that is that that, that determination, that spirit, that willingness to get there, that's not um, luck, that's not yeah. good fortune, that's put into that team. John Hughes encourages that in his players. We saw it in the semi-final with the two fullbacks combining an extra time to score the winning goal. These are qualities that John Hughes puts into his side. And that's why the victory was deserved, even if it came at a time when Falkirk were on top of the match. It was a great attendance at Hamden yesterday, Richard, 37,000 in Vanessa Kelly Thistles average attendance is 3,700. Do you think this cup success can make a material difference to that? Well, history tells us it doesn't normally. Um, usually uh, clubs that take a big support to a cup final find that their next home attendance is back down to normal. I think there is a slight difference with Inverness. Geographically, there is potential there. They don't suffer the same drain of, of supporters to the old firm as clubs in the, in the west of Scotland and the central belt do. And it's a young club and it's come a long way in a short period of time. So I think that there is a chance for growth, but the club has got to work hard at that. It's got to reach out, it's got to be better at doing that. But yeah, they have the potential to make the difference from this Cup final triumph. Pat, you can't help feeling so pleased for John Hughes. He's a great character for Scottish football. Everybody wrote him off at the start of the season. He wins two Manager of the Year awards. He finishes it with the Scottish Cup. It doesn't get any better yeah, than that. Yeah, and third in the league and obviously European football as well. It's everything rolled in together. It's an, an, an unimaginably good yeah, season that he's put there. And also, on top of all that, they played really good football. They it was do. enjoyable to watch as well, which is hard to do. The easiest thing is to go and put a strong team together who just lump it forward. They're a team that deserve to get silverware. And I have to say at the end of this, Motherwell are certainly a team that deserve to be in the SPFL as well. They're a good team and they will not have problems next year. I'll tell you what, I think Inverness can get better. <laughs> Pat, Richard, thank you very much indeed. They think it's all over. Well, it finally is. The domestic Scottish football season done and dusted. A massive final weekend for Cali Thistle and for Motherwell. Commiserations to Falkirk and to Rangers. We'll do it all again next season. But for now, from all of us on the sports scene team, thanks for watching and until next time, good night. We are